Hello everyone. I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about resistance heating. We start with the principle of the resistance heating. In a circuit, we can see that when we apply any voltage to the resistance, current I will be passing through the resistance. The value of the current I is equal to V that is voltage divided by resistance R. Current is inversely proportional to the resistance and when current pass through the resistance, the power loss will be I square R and this power loss will be converted into heat and the heat produced can be used for any heating treatment of the charge. So power loss is exactly equal to the I square R loss and this power loss is converted into heat. Here also same circuit is represented in different way. The charge to be heated is connected with the voltage source and when we pass the current through the charge, I square R power loss will be generated and heat will be produced. We have different types of uh, resistance furnace, direct resistance furnace as well as indirect resistance furnace. And the principle behind resistance furnace is exactly similar to the principle we discussed for resistance heating. We use the high resistivity conductor as a heating element and when we apply supply to the heating element current I will pass through the heating element I square R losses will be generated and then it will produce a heat and the heat by way of convection or by way of radiation will be transferred to the charge. In most of the resistance furnace we use forced air circulation. Air is heated and hot air is forced to the object to be heated. In the figure we can see direct type of resistance furnace. We have two electrodes which is connected to the electric supply and the electrodes are directly in contact with the charge. So when we switch on the supply, current will pass through the electrodes and through the charge. So charge itself will pass the current and that is why the name is given as a direct resistance furnace. In the figure we can see the indirect type of resistance furnace. Here also we have a heating element and we pass the current from the heating element but the charge and the heating element are not directly in contact with each other. We have insulation provided between heating element and charge and that is why the name is given as an indirect resistance furnace. If we see the construction, we have metal box with coated inside with heat resistive material. We use either wire or strip heating elements and they are arranged on the side walls of the metal box. In case of single phase, elements are connected in series and parallel combination while in three phase, heating elements are connected either in star or delta. In case of direct resistance furnace, 
heat is developed in the charge itself because heating elements are connected or in contact with the charge itself and through the heating element and through the charge current will pass indirect resistance furnace current is not passed through the charge heating element gets heated by flow of current and then heat is transferred by way of radiation application heat treatment of metals like hardening annealing deep annealing etc heating and drying process of china clay for example porcelain insulators fuse base as well as top switch base baking and cooking for bakery industries drying of spray painting enameling of wires small coils transformers heating of oil in oil filtration process of transformer oil immersion heater we use for heating water or oil these are some of the applications of resistance type of furnace we discuss certain properties of the heating element the first property is a high specific resistance if we use the heating element with high specific resistance then the length required of the heating element will reduce and the size of the resistance furnace and cost can be substantially decrease high melting point the heating element we use must have a very high melting point then high temperature can be achieved with the provided heating elements free from oxidation the heating element must be free from the oxidation because if oxidation occurs then ultimately heating element failure might be possible low temperature coefficient if we use a heating element with low temperature coefficient then a resistance value of the heating element will remain constant when temperature rise so these are some of the properties we must understand while selecting the best possible heating elements now we will discuss certain factors which we have to consider while designing of heating element temperature requirement supply voltage availability of the supply voltage range of current which we are intend to pass through the heating element and type of conductor whether it is a wire or strip type so this all factors we must consider while designing any of the heating element at the end we'll discuss certain causes of failure of heating element formation of hot spot the point on the heating element at which there is a more temperature looks brighter and that is known as a hot spot because of formation of hot spot there is always a possibility of breaking of heating element in a due course of time oxidation of the heating element element surface gets oxidized at a high temperature and breaks due to heating and cooling effect of elements creates hot spot and finally failure of the element intermittent operation frequent on and off operation of heating element increase the oxidation effect resulting in failure of heating element contamination and corrosion contamination of dust 
dirt etc on heating element creates corrosion of heating elements tends to failure of heating element brittleness due to grain growth alloys having iron composition creates grain growth on heating element at higher temperature after long working life material becomes brittle increased the rate of brittleness beyond the safe value tends to failure of the heating element so these are certain causes of the failure of heating element which we must know when we use in resistance furnace thank you for watching my video keep watching thank you very much